in order to get to the incline rail, you would have had to have walked there. You didn't transport there. Everything was everything on the way was here. So you've stopped, you've played with your kids, you've argued with your husband right here, you've you lived life right here also. So that's what we're after right now. In this second episode of Dirt Fishing, Mike Relics takes you to one of the coolest yet long forgotten pieces of Hamilton infrastructure. There it is. The Wentworth Street Incline Railway. Watch as Mike finds some historic items that likely belong to the railway's passengers. What is this? Look at that! Then stay tuned for a historic reenactment of how Mike's surprise find may have got to its final resting place more than a hundred years ago. Lastly, we speak once again to coin expert Sam Hakim. And this was actually designed by one of the mint masters. You won't want to miss his shocking analysis of what Mike found at the end of his dig. It's been in the ground for, you know, over a hundred years probably. It's quite a find. Buckle up, Hamilton. Once again, it's time for dirt fishing. Always keep searching. <laughs> Hamilton, Ontario, Mike Relics coming at you. Today we have a good one for you. The Hamilton Wentworth Incline Rail, one of the most important transportation systems in Hamilton, and it still would be today if it was running. The Incline Rail was a track that went up the escarpment on a 45 degree angle right here at the bottom of the Wentworth stairs. You can see right now, people use it up and down the escarpment. Same idea as the 1800s. It opened up in about 1895 and closed down in about 1930. Now it closed down obviously because of the automobiles. So once the automobiles came in, it got a lot easier to get up the escarpment via an automobile. So in 1942, they actually took down the tracks for World War II. They wanted to use the metal for World War II. Today, we are gonna hunt. We are gonna hunt for the relics. The Incline Rail made over a million trips up and down the escarpment right here. There's got to be some treasure from these people. Let's go get it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go about 10 or 15 feet off to the side, and I'm going to try and get away from the modern garbage and get into the relics. Come on, baby. I know you're here. You have to have a little patience in this game. Uh, sometimes you'll get a good quick signal and it'll disappear on you. So one of my rules is only dig repeating signals. Don't, don't get crazy if you lost the signal. Uh, these things pick up different things. They pick up soil, they pick up. So there's a lot of different things going on. If you just barely catch a big piece of uh, iron in the ground, then it's going to sound like something good. So only dig repeating signals. If you're not happy with it, don't dig it. There's no point in going out and digging 200 holes. What you want to do is dig up treasure, not dig up holes. All right, Hamilton, see, this is the fun part. Lots of spider webs to walk through, right in the face. The spiders always like to stand at exactly six foot two, which is my height, and build a nest. So I walk right through them, face first. It's lots of fun, all to dig up a penny. That was awesome. Did you find something? All right, so. I think I have a good signal in here, but it's mixed in with some iron. So I'm going to check it out. It could just be iron. So let's give her a dig. She's a pretty good signal. Hole number one of the day, Hamilton Wentworth Incline Rail, 1890 to 1930 area. Let's see if we can find something, period. Pinpoint again, I explained that in uh, episode one when I get close to metal. It gives me a nice consistent beep so we don't have to make huge holes. Whoa, here we go. All right, it might be modern. It is a penny. 
There are also some uh, other pennies out there that may not be modern. Give me a second, I'm gonna get a wipe on uh, my trusty cloth there, my jeans. All right, oh, there we go. It looks like we got, it's not gonna be smashingly old, obviously. The, if it was, it'd be a large cent. So it's a regular penny at 1965. So pretty cool, 1965 penny. I think this is 1965, 1968 actually. Not exactly an incline rail relic what we're looking for, but I gotta dig them up because they're good signals and hey, she's a coin, hole number one. Pretty cool, I like it. So 1968 is also the year that they started uh, making our quarters and dimes out of nickel alloy instead of out of silver. So if that was a quarter or a dime, there's a good chance it could have been silver. So let's go on to the next one. I'm not I'm really a huge fan of digging on the pass. As you can tell, this is very, very tampered down over the years by everybody. So it's really difficult to dig into this. It's basically just a sheet of rock. So I try not to put my machine in places where I don't want to dig, just in case I do get a good signal there. I don't want to spend half my day here trying to dig something out of this tampered pass. So my hope is that they got into in between. <laughs> Where I'm standing right now should have been the ticket booth for the incline rail. One penny to get up it, obviously the building's not here anymore, but I believe through my research it stood right here. So right now we're going to take a walk all around here. I've actually seen a picture and it was dated about 1910 and there was about 50 people in line right down this path, all waiting to pay their one cent to get into the incline rail. So we're gonna hit right here where the house was. We're gonna walk this path a little bit, hit here, and see if they dropped any coins or relics for us. The kind of stuff we're looking for when we're looking for a house site <coughs> are bricks. So obviously this is not natural. This is not from the escarpment. So who knows, maybe from the incline rail ticket house. We'll check it out. All right, we're gonna dig. This is actually really, really good ground to dig in. The, the conditions look ideal, the hold up coins, and looks like it's gonna be easy digging. Sometimes you get out here and uh, the digging can be quite difficult. All right, here's a pretty good signal. I'm gonna unplug uh, my headphones there and let you hear it. All right, listen up. That's pretty sharp. I'm getting some jumpy numbers, so I can't guarantee it's gonna change the history of Hamilton, but we're gonna dig it up and see what we got. These rocks are 10,000 years old, so they're relics in their own right. Whoop. Whoop. Something's here. All right, let's see what we, whoa, what do we got there? looks silver. That's a great signal. That's the signal I showed you. Now, what did it, oh yeah. Oh, here we go. All right. Oh, that's cool. AWC company, Sterling, with a serial number. So, what we have here then is the back, I'm gonna say of a pocket watch, made out of silver. So this is 925 silver, which is really, really cool. Very neat. I don't know if you can see that logo on there. So we'll be able to find out what the AWC company is. And it actually has a, a serial number. So we may even be able to find out the exact date, which is awesome. That's really cool. So you can see right here, there's a little hinge part where you would have flipped it open. That is really neat. Nice big chunk of silver, wow.
this is the kind of stuff we're looking for. Stuff that you'll be able to date and stuff that you could find just wild. That's very cool. All right, well, let's get the show on the road and I'll get on to the next one. So there are relics here. We're gonna find them. I can tell you right now, if you dig up the iron in a site, it's gonna tell you a story about what happened in that site. So you'll be able to tell, I mean, Obviously, you're not going to find anything dramatically wild or monetary value-wise, but uh, if you want to know what happened at that site you're on, dig up the iron, which are axe heads, horseshoes. All right, I got to dig up this iron and see what we got here. Oh. Yeah, right. Dig up the iron. There we go. If you look at this now, we could date this. <clears throat> Square head nails still sticking out of it. Wow. These are beautiful relics, man. You could just, so there's pictures of the escarpment. So obviously to build Hamilton, at some point you could find pictures from the early 1900s where there are no trees because we built Hamilton with them. The only way to haul out logs and stuff like that, you need a horse and you need a big horse. That's a big horse with the square head nail still in it, just wild. Beautiful, beautiful. I really, really like digging this stuff. Any of the ax heads, any of the horseshoes, it just tells such a story. Oh man. We're looking right in the range of uh, the incline rail. This could have been off one of the horses that brought the train tracks to build the incline rail. That's so awesome. Isn't that cool? Neat, yeah. eh? All right, it's I'm not like, done yet. It's like... All right, Hamilton, Ontario, I'm gonna give you a little trick of the trade right now. Obviously, we're still at the Wentworth Incline Rail here in Hamilton, Ontario. We've dug around it. We have a couple cool finds to show you. But what we've noticed walking up to this point from where we've parked is that there's a little bit of construction going on on the road right behind us. They are built a condo on the edge of the escarpment there. They're redoing the sidewalks right now. So anytime you can safely get into, I'm not saying obviously jump construction fences. I'm not saying do it while they're there. But if you do come up to a sidewalk dig out, always dig it up. The stuff that was there when they paved over it is still underneath the sidewalks. So this is what I was talking about. Sidewalk dig out, everything's nice and safe. I haven't jumped a fence, we're on the road. Now, obviously these piles, it's screening. It's probably been brought in to do the asphalt work. So you're not gonna find anything in these guys. What I'm looking for are the dig outs. So you can see that side wall there where they've already done the digging for me. So I'm just going to run over there quickly and give it a quick scan and see what we can pull out. All right. I got something in there. It should be really easy to dig out. So, another jumpy signal. It could be another modern pop damn but Again, if you can't find it with your pin pointer. <coughs> oh, I heard something. Okay, so I'm gonna dig that out a little bit. Oh, coin. <coughs> At it. There we go. I'm gonna say it's gonna be modern, but. Maybe not, let's check it out. A lot of people won't like that, uh, just because they say you can scratch the coins and stuff, but the bottom line is I own the coin now. It's gonna be hard to get details off this. Just by the corrosion, I'm gonna say it's probably modern. It looks like a typical Canada coin, which could be from, <clears throat> I'd say the 90s up, so nothing too exciting. I got about four feet left here, and I'm hoping we hit the jackpot. Let's do this. Oh, another coin. Ah, coin spill. Cool, eh? Yeah, so coin spills even happen. We were talking about coin spills last time when uh, you're out uh, having a picnic with your kids, you're out on a date under a tree with your girlfriend. So that's cool. Two coins, same hole. Maybe I'll stick my pinpointer in here again and see. If... Ah, so someone sat down here and lost lots of coins. Let's see what they dropped. Although they're modern, it's still kind of fun to dig up. Look at that. Here we go. Ah, beautiful. I think there's one more in there. We'll dig it up for fun. Oh, 
We got her. There she is. All right, there we go. So modern coin spill, but still pretty cool. Oh, I lost one. There were four coins. Oh, there she is. There we go, pretty cool. I'll uh, clean them up, who knows, maybe they're old, but I'm gonna say by the corrosion, they're not too old. Interesting signal, it's not that deep. I'm gonna give it a quick whirl here. Right there. Woo, there we go. Interesting signal. Iron, it's a ring. Honestly, it's probably horse related, I'd say. Getting back there, definitely be period. Very cool. Honestly, you don't see things like this these days. It's not a rain guide. A rain guide would uh, be a lot smaller. I'll explain what a rain guide is later. But uh, definitely some kind of metal. Definitely man-made, some kind of ring. I'm gonna say horse-related, maybe from the bit <clears throat> in the side of the mouth, pop, 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 bit. Pretty common to find, you find a lot of horse-related stuff from the, as you saw earlier, we dug up a horseshoe, but yeah, there's treasure everywhere, if you call this treasure. Personally, I do, and I love it already. <clears throat> Yeah. What is this? Look at that. <laughs> I'm like, there's a good signal. Here we go. All right, hold on one second here. That was weird. That was sitting on the ground, obviously, because they've done a dig out here. Isn't that cool? I just found one sitting on the ground. Now, my hope is that it's not modern. And I mean, I'm starting to feel by the feel of it that maybe it's not. It feels thin, it feels weird. This is really cool. Okay, so give me one second again. I'm gonna go back to my office and get my cleaning equipment out. This could be cool, man. I don't think this is a modern penny. It doesn't feel like it has the right weight. This is really cool. This is half the battle and half the fun. Normally I carry a little toothbrush in my uh, bag, but I seem to have left it on my counter this morning, so you gotta watch me do this manually. Oh man, oh man, oh baby. Oh man. Okay. Oh, this, this is cool, man. I believe it's American. I see a shield, which is a great sign. Okay, so we are gonna be able to get a date and a make out of it, and I believe it's gonna be old, and I believe it's an incline rail relic. And because we're on a dig out, which is what I said to do, was go to the dig outs, we, I dug that ring out right beside it. I said, whoa, hold the phones for a second. What is this? I can tell this is an old coin already because it's made out of copper and it's going green. 1902? Oh, baby. Is it, is it, if it's 1902, that's our favorite year. I got 1900, oh man, 19, 1906. I'm gonna say 1906, right now, 1906, incline rail, 1890 to 1930. We've been out here for three hours, came to the dig out. There she is, she's a beauty. It may not look like much right now, but I'm gonna clean it up for you. And I believe it's American, so it's come over from the US of A, it has the shield on the back, it has the wreath on the back, it says one cent in the big writing with the shield, has a year, it's readable, we're there, we did it, here's the incline rail relic with the horseshoe. The horseshoe makes me just as excited, but to finally at the last hole of the day, dig up a coin, 120 years old, in the original matrix, underneath the sidewalk they tore up. That's how it's done, that's how we do it. Stay responsible, do it well, be patient, Coil low, you'll get there.
Looks like you found a 1906 Indian head penny. It's pretty corroded, but uh, you can still make the date on it. So it's been in the ground for, you know, over 100 years probably. Well over 100 years, so it's quite a find. Looking at it, you've got an old uh, American Indian head scent. And uh, you can barely make the date on it, but it's 1906 here. So they started minting these in uh, 1859, actually. And... Um, they stopped in 1909 because they went to a uh, another format with the Lincoln Head Penny, which was in 1909. So they stopped these midway in 1909, and then they migrated to the new uh, the new die for Lincoln Head, and it was actually Lincoln's hundredth birthday. That's why they went to the uh, uh, 1909 design. But uh, when these originally came out, they were made out of uh, most uh, nickel, actually uh, copper nickel. And because of the Civil War, they were heavily hoarded, these copper nickel pennies, because uh, it was in short supply. It was used, a metal that was used in the war effort. But then they went to 95% copper uh, about a, a year or two after that. Uh, the Indian head design was issued from 1859 to 1909S. But in, in that particular, between those years, there was a variety in 1906 called the Restrike. And, uh, it's a nice variety because it shows the doubling of the date and a lot of collectors that collect varieties love these little varieties and some of them can be worth quite a bit of money. The restrike is caused by a little hiccup in the, in the in the process of striking the coin where it's actually a bit doubled. So it shows that doubling effect on the coin. When you look at the coin on the magnification, you'll see a, a little lip underneath each of the numerals that outlines the contour of the numerals to show that it was actually doubled and it causes that restrike look to it. Quite steadily and uh, Don't they... Don't jiggle them so much. Oh, we sorry, man. Kind of, no, we can hold them, just... Yeah. Okay, so the coins you brought me, Scott, from... Um... And don't say Scott. Oh, sorry, man. It's okay. <laughs> what you'll I, you'll what learn. You, what should I call you? Just don't call me anything. Because <laughs> you're so, just speaking so to these, the audience, right? These coins. What's that clicking yeah. noise? It's a security lock. Oh. Sure. <laughs> no, no. It's, <laughs> it's me when I move. <laughs> oh, so... Oh, it, it, that's it's a what button. that is? Okay, okay. Cool. <laughs> Are you going to use bloopers? <laughs>